Hey guys, Scott here with a guide on Gundir's Halberd, which I believe to be the best glaive in the entire game, and it's mostly due to Champion's Charge, but Champion's Charge is so damn good that it elevates the glaive pretty much above all of the other ones. So we're going to take a look here at how to use it properly, and what to do with Champion's Charge, and how to build it, and hopefully you'll uh, come away better for it. If not, then well, I don't know. I don't have a contingency for that. Shit. So how do we build Gundir's Halberd? Well, you're going to want 66 strength, and that's because this weapon is mostly a strength weapon and not a quality weapon. I know, it's scary, there are a few of them in the world, but you're going to want 66 strength because when you're two-handing that, that basically makes it 99 strength, and since it's a primarily strength scaling weapon, that's where you'll get the most benefit out of it. Now, Glaives took a little hit to their poise health and hyper armor, basically, uh, with a recent patch, so you're going to need a decent chunk of poise to tank through even one-handed spear running attacks and things like that. Um, I believe 31.5 poise is enough to tank through a spear running attack, which is very important to tank through because that is a nightmare to deal with otherwise. So 31.5 is probably the best level of poise. Um, you can go a bit higher. I might be off of that value a little bit, but it's right around there. Um, honestly, just the full favor set was totally fine, even at level 120 with this, so that works. Um, other than that, everything else is kind of up to you. Um, you can get whatever fashion you want, as long as you have a decent amount of poise and 66 strength, and everything else is pretty much up to you. So, there are a couple of ways to actually use Gundir's Halberd in a fight, and it really depends entirely on what you are fighting and how they're using whatever they're fighting with. If you're fighting smaller weapons, things that don't have hyper armor like straight swords, katanas, curved swords, things like that, you generally want to rely on staggered R1s. And a staggered R1 is basically you just R1ing, moving a little teeny bit, and then R1ing again, so you reset the animation and don't do the second R1 in the combo. This enables you to chain a R1 that does hit into the second hit of the combo and end up winning the trade. Um, this is generally how you play with great swords as well. Um, so if you hear the phrase staggered R1s, that's basically what it means. Just slight R1s, then moving up, and R1 again. You just don't want them to get an opening where you're not attacking and trading with them. So that's generally how you'll play against smaller weapons. Now here's the thing, don't be afraid to use champion charge against smaller weapons as well. It's more useful against bigger weapons, but against small weapons, it's still really good. Um, the amount of turning and control that you have with it is insane. And the thing is, if you're fighting somebody that has a smaller weapon, chances are they might be one-handing and they'll have a parry tool in their offhand. And a lot of people think charges are free parries, but Gunder's Halberd is not a free parry at all. Because you can control and steer it so much that you can start the charge, veer off to the left or right, and turn it back into them as they're missing their parry. Now, a really good player will know that you're going to do this, and he won't parry until you're actually finishing your final sweep, but that's actually really risky, because the timing is just, I don't know, it's just weird. He definitely can do it, and if he knows to look out for it, then it's probably going to counter you, but then if that player is expecting that, then you can just do a regular charge, and he'll parry too late. So you, you got to work out who you're fighting, um, how good they are, and how they're going to respond to your attacks. But for the most part, against smaller weapons, it's just staggered R1s. And against people that know your timings, um, doing things like rolling R2s actually end up screwing up people sometimes because they expect a really quick attack, and the rolling R2 covers a bunch of distance and hits twice, so if they mistime the roll, it might clip them on the end. Um, it shouldn't be the primary form of your damage, obviously. It's mostly going to be regular R1s and champions charges, but for the most part, staggered R1s and charges are going to be your entire strategy against smaller weapons without hyper armor. Now against weapons that do have hyper armor, like great swords, ultra great swords, great axes, all those, um, you need to play a little bit differently. The thing is, because Poise got such a, uh, well, it got a buff, but it got a nerf for glaives and halberds, you can't really poise through a great sword and above in terms of poise damage ever. It doesn't really have, it doesn't matter how much poise you have. You need something like 60 or something ridiculous to a point where you can't really normally obtain that much poise. So you should just kind of give up on trying to poise through great swords and anything that is heavier or, you know, uh, has the same or more poise damage. So that puts you in quite a pickle because what else are you going to do? And the thing is, you rely solely on charge. Charge is the answer to having to deal with hyper armor. And the way you would do this is, instead of doing a normal attack, you would just do a charge. And here's the thing, if you start at the same time that your opponent starts swinging, you will charge with him, you'll tank through the hit because charge has far more poise health, so you can uh, tank through basically anything. And you won't be interrupted, and depending on the angle that you actually hit your opponent with, they won't be interrupted by the first couple of hits of the charge, but then as soon as their hyper armor is over, they'll still be getting hit by the charge, and they'll get interrupted and then knocked down, then you can chain more after that. Basically, 
you're going to be doing all of your damage, or most of it, through the charge. Because they cannot hyper armor through that. And even if you, you know, charge and you glide past them because they're still in hyper armor, you can turn that shit in a full circle and come back and still hit them. So that is the way you would counter normal hyper armor, um, just by primarily using charge. And the thing is, if they swing at the same time as you, they're going to lose the trade. If you charge first and they react to it and they swing once and roll away, you can still turn it and maybe even clip them. It's not like... With most charges, as soon as you dodge the first, you know, hit, you're off scot-free. With Champion's Charge, you're not. You gotta keep looking out for it, because it can turn right back and hit you. So, with that constant threat in their face, they can't really do Staggered R1s very safely, because they're just gonna get out-traded. And if they do only one R1, well then they're not really doing much in terms of offense and you can still have a chance to catch them with the champion's charge and against particularly passive cd players that don't even want to fight even rolling our ones and rolling our twos are all things that can change their timings if they've gone into full passive mode so against hyper armor weapons champion's charge is a beautiful thing now here's the thing i say hyper armor weapons like you know great swords and you know, um, curved great swords and things like that that are relatively fast. If you're fighting like a great hammer or, you know, a great axe or an ultra great sword, you can still do the old wait and wait and hit method where you just wait for them to swing and hit them as soon as their animation starts and you can outrange them. Um, that works with the horizontal great swords, uh, works with uh, the shorter range great axes. So you can still absolutely do that. Um, and frankly, charging into that is not quite as safe. So, um, the good hyper armor weapons is what I'm saying. You use champion's charge a lot. For the slower ones, you can do whatever you want because they're still unbelievably slow and you can hit them in between their swings and roll away. So that still works. So those are the main play styles that you'll be utilizing when using this weapon. But there are still a couple of little nuances that you should be familiar with. Um, uh, one thing you should know is how the hitboxes of the final slash of champion charge works. It's kind of like a, mm, like a 270 degree circle. So you can see right here, I've actually stunned the opponent into hitting him into the final hit before I even actually begun spinning for the final hit. So he's stunned here, and then right around here, I swing around and get him because I've stunned him with the initial hit. So get familiar with that angle, and you'll be able to stun people that don't think they're actually in range of getting stunned into the final hit. And, uh, it ends up working more often than people think if you could become very familiar with how the hitboxes work with the actual spin portion of it. Um, the next thing that you should know is the uh, the wake-ups with the charge. Um, I don't believe it's possible to do this perfectly every time. I've tested it on good players, and I can hit it maybe half the time. And the other half, they just, they just roll away regardless. And I don't know if that's because I'm making an error or they're making an error, but it's almost impossible to prove one way or another if there is an unescapable version of this. But you can come damn close to it, and you got to learn the timing. So... If someone's on the ground after a charge or a backstab or a parry or anything like that, you want to set up a charge and immediately charge and do it again. Um, and you need to know the timing for this. For example, this right here is too early. He was able to roll away in between charges. And if you look right here, this is the perfect timing. He was unable to do anything. Again, I can't confirm or deny if this is simply human error on their part or my part, but it's one of those things that's really impossible to prove, and it works like half the time, so there's no real reason to not try it. Even if you go past them and they try to backstab you, it takes you out of range of a backstab. Plus, you can loop back around anyway and probably hit them, so there's no real downside to trying a wake-up, but you gotta learn their timing for it. It was, you know, right around that timing of uh, where it was successful in that clip. But um, other than that... Um, it is just practice. It has a fairly high skill cap for a weapon with the wake-ups and knowing exactly how the hitboxes work, knowing exactly how you can steer Champion's Charge. So, um, overall it is definitely my favorite glaive in the game, and it is never really not fun to use, which is a rarity with some weapons in this game. So, um, that is Gundyr's Halberd, guys. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you next time.